inflate and deflate that's why we call it as an inflatable cushion right so regarding the material with which the bags are made nylon or polyamide fabric right this is the material with which your airbags are made and what's the use of these bags so these airbags will protect the occupants who is an occupant anyone who is sitting and traveling inside the vehicle is an occupant the driver the front seat passenger the rear seat passenger all are occupants only so these bags protect these occupants from hitting the interior parts of the vehicle what are all the interior parts available in your car yes here it is right your steering wheel one of the most hardest substances of the vehicle right and then your instrumentation panel otherwise called as your dashboard and then your windshield windows pillars of the vehicle a pillar b pillar c pillar so these are all the interior parts with which the occupants are likely to hit with hit with during a collision so these are the inflate in between the passengers and these hard components in order to protect the occupants from a impact from a collision right it will provide a soft cushioning effect on the body of the occupants during an impact right so these are all the typical airbags available in your vehicle just i'll zoom in you can see that clearly right so here is your driver airbag right the driver airbag is used to protect the driver during an accident right so this airbag is mounted in the center hub of the steering wheel got it this and here is your passenger airbag right passenger airbag is used to protect the front seat occupant and it is mounted in the dashboard area above the glove box right and these four are the side airbag which is used to protect the occupants during a side impact the vehicle is tend to hit your vehicle from the sideways that time these airbags will protect the occupants so this is mounted in the side of the seat or in the backrest of the seat or sometimes in the door trim panel also right and the one you are seeing in the windows is a window curtain shield airbag or window airbag they will called as general right this curtain is also used to protect the occupants during a side collision right so these are the typical airbags available in our vehicle right and then airbag is one of the passive devices say passive safety devices available in automobile so what is mean by passive safety device there are generally two types of safety devices available in vehicle one is your active safety another one is your passive safety so what's the difference between these two active and passive safety devices so active active safety systems are nothing but the devices which have the ability to avoid collisions it can prevent collisions on the other hand your passive safety systems are nothing but the devices which protect the occupants which protect the occupants during a collision it don't have the ability to avoid collision right but rather it could save lives during a collision right in simple active devices prevent accident passive devices protect the occupants during or after the accident right okay and here are the some of the typical examples for your active safety system your anti lock braking system abs tire pressure monitoring system tpms night vision adaptive headlight so many things are there blind spot detection lane departure warning adaptive cruise control so these all systems comes under the passive uh, active category right for example uh, how your uh, abs comes under the active category right see whenever the driver hits the brake pedal very hardly during an emergency at very high speed what will happen one of the four wheels will get into a lock right we lock up will happen so the locked wheel can no longer react to the driver steering intention got it this may ultimately uh, make the vehicle to go into a skid right that may end up with a massive collision what is mean by skidding 
the uncontrolled motion of a vehicle the vehicle control is not in the driver's hand right? that is skidding a uh, skidding right so that may lead uh, that may end up with the massive collision so on the other hand if the vehicle is equipped with your abs anti lock braking system so abs module predicts the wheel lock up at an earlier stage thereby applying individual brakes to each wheel with the various pressures it has the ability to avoid skidding thereby it, it avoids accident right so since abs has the ability to avoid collision it, it can prevent the accident that's why it comes under the active category active safety devices right and here are some of the examples for your passive safety devices these are nothing but your seat belts nothing but your safety belts airbags collapsible steering column and crumple zones of the vehicle so these are all the passive devices available in your vehicle got it so for example we will see one one example here how your seat belts comes under the passive category as we know moving objects possess momentum a matter of inertia right momentum is nothing but the product of the mass and velocity of an object and it is a measure of the kinetic energy right then according to your uh, newton's first law of motion which is otherwise called as law of inertia which says that objects moving at a constant velocity will tend to remain at the same velocity unless of an acted by an external unbalanced force right so according to this law even if your car stops during a collision due to some external impact force the people are also going to go sitting and travel inside the vehicle will keep to uh, will tend to keep on moving since there is no external force for them to stop right in order to overcome this issue cars have had seat belts for decades which will be used an external device during a collision and that will protect uh, that will restrain the occupants from the impact right so from this we can conclude that seat belts don't have the ability to avoid collision uh, rather it could save lives during a collision right so seat belts all work after the impact has occurred that is comes under the passive safety devices so likewise you can categorize all your safety devices under these two category active and passive safety devices got it i hope you understand <laughs> right next one regarding the invention and history of airbags right airbags was invented by john w hedrick an american scientist in the year 1953 right on the 18th day of august 1953 first airbag module was patented by the us government and here is the interesting thing airbag became common in 1980s and made as a standard equipment across in 1990 so there is a huge span of 40 years in developing a better airbag equipment so what made the scientists to work for almost four decades 40 years to bring out a proper functional and commercial airbag so there were two factors which hardly affected which hardly influenced the development of airbags in those days in 1950s there were there were the first one is your artificial intelligence and second one is the mechanism used to begin the inflation of an airbag artificial intelligence and the airbag deployment mechanism are the two factors which hardly affected the development of airbag right first one artificial intelligence yes airbag is not a manually operated device you cannot operate airbag under the, with any sort of manual input under any circumstances at any cost so there should be an artificial intelligence in the vehicle apart from the driver who could take better airbag deployment decision so what scientists did they found sensors for this purpose right so the first ever impact sensor developed by john w hedrick in 1950 is had few limitations in it for example these sort of impact sensors can trigger the airbag module only when it receives some sort of physical damage right the sensor has to receive some physical impact on the sensor then only it has ability to trigger the airbag otherwise it won't right so what Hedrick did. He made two impact sensors to be placed in the front bonnet, somewhere near your headlight. So please be, uh, please imagine two impact sensors near the headlight of the front bonnet. Then consider this situation. 
so here the car crashed into a tree somewhere near the middle of the ballot so from this picture it is very clear that the place or region where your impact sensors are mounted was not at all affected with this collision so what happened this situation the airbag will not trigger the sorry the sensor will not trigger the airbag module so this made a headache to receive some set of irrelevant and inconsistent results under his observation at one time the sensor trigger the airbag for a very minute collision on the other hand where for a very big impact like this the airbag uh, did, didn't trigger the the sensor didn't trigger the airbag module so this artificial intelligence played a vital role in the development of airbags in those 1950s right okay and one more thing these set of impact sensors are not smart enough to differentiate the severity of the collision right in most of the cases for a minor impact right for a very low speed collision the sensors will trigger the airbag module and that's another problem here right the second one is your airbag deployment mechanism what's the mechanism behind the inflation of an airbag used by the scientists they used to compress the gas canisters for this purpose canister is nothing but a holding device anything which holds something is a canister it can be a, it may be a container or it may be a cylinder whatever may be a holding device right so scientists used to compress the gas cylinders for the inflation of an airbag the construction is too simple there will be a compressed gas cylinder like this and it is filled with a high pressured uh, some sort of inert gases most prefer preferably were nitrogen or uh, argon gases right so the nitrogen gas is compressed and kept under very high pressure inside this cylinder right and there will be a nozzle at the top to which your mouth of the nylon bag is mounted the mouth of the nylon bag is mounted to this nozzle right so regarding uh, according to the regarding the working whenever the sensor detects an impact then according to the design the nozzle has to open right then what will happen the high pressured nitrogen gas will come out of the cylinder with high velocity and it directly enters the nylon bag to inflate it because the nylon bag in the mouth of the nylon bag is mounted to the nozzle of the cylinder so this will make the bag to inflate whenever a collision occurs but these compressed gas concept fail to answer three important questions right that's why our modern cars don't have any sort of compressed gas in the vehicle to inflate the airbag right before getting into those questions let me want to review some of the most important factors about the airbag deployment right facts about airbag deployment first one <coughs> velocity of an airbag inflation what would be the velocity of an airbag while it is inflating can you imagine the velocity here it will be around 150 to 250 miles per hour right uh, we know that one mile is equal to approximately 1.6 kilometers so if you try to convert these values into kilometers you will get around 400 to 420 kilometers per hour so this is the velocity with which your airbag has to burst out from the steering wheel during an emergency in order to protect the uh, occupant got it right time taken by the airbag to inflate is the next factor right so if the airbag has to inflate at uh, over 250 miles per hour then what would be the time taken by the airbag to inflate it is just 40 milliseconds right or 0.04 seconds which is equal to 1 by 25th of a second right which is equivalent to four times faster than blinking so this is the this is the time taken by the airbag to inflate completely right the third factor liters of n2 gas needed to fill the airbag this is nothing but the amount of nitrogen gas needed to fill the bag right this will be around uh, 62 to 72 liters approximately and please be noted these uh, values are given in terms of your driver airbag 
it will be differ from uh, other airbags right uh, here we mentioned that at the top right so driver airbag according to driver airbag we are uh, giving this value then what about your passenger airbag here the velocity and time taken is almost similar to your driver airbag can you see here here also the velocity is 150 to 250 miles per hour and the time taken is uh, nothing but 35 to 40 milliseconds it is similar to a driver airbag but see the amount of nitrogen is needed to fill the airbag here it is 140 liters it is double than the twice than that of your driver airbag there it needs only approximately 70 liters to fill the driver airbag but to fill the airbag of the passenger we need 140 liters why the logic behind this is very simple since the size of the passenger airbag is twice as that of your driver airbag the amount of nitrogen gas is needed also doubled right because the driver airbag the motor of the driver airbag is to cover only the steering wheel so it is somewhat uh, smaller in size but whereas on the other hand your uh, passenger airbag has to draw, uh, cover the entire uh, dashboard while it is inflating So since the size is, right, since the size of the bag is doubled, here the amount of nitrogen gas is needed to fill the passenger airbag is also getting doubled. Right? And this is these values are given in terms of your passenger airbag, right? Right. And then for, this is for your side airbag. Can you see the values here? The velocity is around 500 miles per hour, right? Which is equivalent to your velocity of a domestic flight, right or not? Right. And the time taken is just 25, sorry, 12 to 25 milliseconds. So why your side airbag is inflating at a much a rapid rate when compared to your driver and passenger airbag? Right? There the velocity is around 250 miles per hour, 200 to 250 miles per hour. Here it is double of that. 500 miles per hour. The time taken is just 20 to 25 milliseconds. Why? For your frontal airbags, nothing but your driver airbag and the front passenger airbag, there is a crumple zone in the front of the vehicle, nothing but your long bonnet. Right? Crumple zones are nothing but uh, crush zones, which are specially are specifically designed in a vehicle in order to absorb absorb the impact force from the collision during an accident. Right? So these crumple zones will absorb the impact force and it will deform. Right? So after getting the energy from the impact, these crumple zones will tend to, tend to deform so that most of the impact energy is absorbed by these crumple zones. The remaining energy is now allowed to enter the cabin. So this will take some time for the impact force to enter the cabin. But uh, in case of a side collision, there is no crumble zones in the perimeter of the vehicle, at the sides of the vehicle, right? There will be only a thin door is there. So whenever a side impact is happening, what will happen? The impact force will reach the cabin very quickly. So that's why the side airbags are designed in such a way that they, are, they have to be explored, they have to be inflated in much a rapid velocity. Got it? So now, by keeping these data in mind, we are going to answer for the three questions which are, which are, which are put in front of the compressed gas canisters now. Right? So what are the three questions now? The first one, whether the Compressed gas can produce the velocity as high as 200 miles per hour. The high pressured gas which is kept inside a compressed cylinder can produce some good velocity, no doubt in this. But not as high as 200 miles per hour. And it can be or it may be achieved with some sort of modern techniques today. But please be remembered in 1950s, this is not at all possible. Right? The next question. Is there enough room in the car for a gas canister? 
not only single gas cylinder nowadays a compact suv like your ford across sport is having six airbags inside the vehicle got it so you need six gas gas, gas cylinders to be placed inside your cabin do you have enough room for this absolutely no <coughs> got it the third one whether the gas would remain contained at high pressure for the life of the car which means the car which was bought 10 years before gets into an accident today so the airbag which had been sleeping for more than a decade has to explode within a fraction of seconds all of a sudden so in order to achieve this the nitrogen gas has to retain the same pressure with which it was stored 10 years before is it possible no, there will be a leakage in the storage system, right? There will be a pressure drop down. Right? So it is also not at all possible. So hence, compressed the gas canisters fail to answer these three questions. Our modern cars don't have any sort of compressed gas concept for airbag deployment. Right? So one of the two problems came to an end in the year 1967. Yes, after 13 years, another scientist named Alan K. Breeze developed the ball-in tube sensor for crash detection. So with the introduction of this ball-in tube sensor, the problem with the artificial intelligence came to an end in the year 1967. And one more thing, this uh, introduction of ball in tube sensor was the biggest breakthrough in the history of airbags. Right? So we will discuss the working and uh, construction and working of this ball in tube sensor in the upcoming chapters. Right? In 1998, dual frontal airbags were mandated by National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTAC. This is nothing but Road Safety Regulation Authority of US government. So what they made what they did, they made the dual frontal airbags. Dual frontal airbags are nothing but two frontal airbags, which is used to protect the driver and the front seat passenger. Driver airbags and the passenger airbag are called as dual frontal airbags. Right? They made this dual and frontal airbags as uh, compulsory, as the mandatory uh, in the passenger vehicles of the US. Right? In the next year, 1999, light trucks also, light commercial trucks also came under this rule, which means the light trucks also should possess two airbags in the vehicle. Then only the vehicle is allowed in the market in years. So they achieved this in 1998. In the meantime, we people in India were unaware about the airbags, right? Okay. In 2006, Honda introduced the first motorcycle airbag system. Yes. Goldwing, a tourist or motorbike from Honda, which costs around uh, just 14 lakh Indian rupees a showroom. Right? Honda mounted uh, airbag in this vehicle and they tested. And the result, is, uh, the result was absolutely a failure model. Right? Why? The airbag, just it is successful, it has been successful in uh, vehicles, four wheelers, was failed in two wheelers. Why? See, whenever we are inside a car, we feel somewhat secure, right? There will be a roof at the top, there will be a floor at the bottom, there will be doors and pillars on both the sides. So we feel somewhat secure. We are in an enclosed surface. Whatever happen, happen, I will be inside my cabin only. Right? That's the advantage of our car. But that is not in the case of two-wheelers, right? Imagine a rider who is riding a giant bike like, like this, and there is a deadly dangerous nylon bag, which is sitting in front of him and is readily to inflate at an average velocity of 200 miles per hour. What will happen? He will be thrown out of his vehicle to the roadside, right? Since there is no sort of uh, enclosed surface, right? So this is the one simple reason for not having airbags in two wheelers, right? But the technical answer for this is we can never have airbags in two wheelers unless and until it becomes a primary device. So airbag is not a primary device, it's a SRS device. What do you mean by SRS device? SRS stands for Supplemental Restraint System. That is called as SIR, Supplemental Inflatory Restraint. Right? SRS, supplementary, uh, supplementary Restraint Systems are nothing but the secondary devices which cannot be operated alone. Right? 
which can be operated only with its primary device during a collision in order to help the primary device. The motor of the secondary device is nothing but to help the primary device. So your airbag is not a primary device. It is helping someone. It is helping other device to make it function properly. So who is the main device? If your airbag is a, is a secondary device, then who is your primary device? For whom your airbag is working? Yes, nothing but your seat belt, safety belt. Seat belt is a primary device, whereas airbag is a secondary device. The motor of the airbag is to help the seat belt during a collision. How? How your airbags are helping your seat belt during a collision? Then we have to recall the same story once again. Anything that ha that moves has mass and velocity, right? Anything that has mass and velocity has kinetic energy. That is fine until you crash into something, right? If if so, then all the energy has to go somewhere. According to a first law of thermodynamics, energy can neither be created nor be destroyed. It can be converted from one form into another form. So all the energy in the universe is constant. You cannot create any energy and that you cannot de uh, destroy any, any sort of energy also. So all the energy has to go somewhere. Right? So even though your cars are nowadays designed to crumple up and deform during a collision in order to absorb the impact forces, these force impose some severe risk to the occupants who are sitting inside the vehicle. Right? The problem is, the trouble is, the people who are traveling inside the vehicle also have some, um, some velocity and mass too. Right? So, according to your Newton's first law, even if your car stops during a collision, these people will tend to keep on moving inside the vehicle. That's why your uh, seat belts come in. Right? That's why your seat belt comes in. Uh, up to this, we are very clear, no doubt in that. Right? But the biggest problem here is, the seat belts can restrain only your body and not your head. Got it? Even though your body is fastened too tight, your head surprisingly, uh, which weighs surprise, uh, your head weighs a surprising 3 to 6 kg, will tend to keep on moving and tend to get to the hard steering wheel or glass windshield in front. That's why airbags come in. Right? So during a collision, seat belts at the back will restrain your lower portion of the body. Whereas the airbags in front will restrain the upper portion of the body and your head. So both the primary device and the secondary device have to be considered as a single unit. Using one without the other is not at all advisable. Listen, using the primary device without the secondary device will not give you the complete protection. On the other hand, using the secondary device without the primary device will result in a drastic damage to your body. Keep it in mind. Right? Because most of the people nowadays are thinking if the vehicle is equipped with the airbag, then there is no need to wear seat belt. That is absolutely wrong. Both are same devices only. You have to use both. Then only you will get complete protection during an emergency. Right? So you should always wear your uh, seat belt. So this is a, a kind of awareness program, right? That's why I am telling this. Whenever you are inside a moving vehicle, you should wear your seat belts always. Right? Please keep it in mind. So since there is no seat belts in two wheelers, there is no primary device, then what's the use of uh, secondary device here? That's why airbags are getting failed in two wheelers. Right? But still, researches are going on to make airbags in two wheelers also. Right? And here are the short recalls of years we have come across. So in 1953, airbags were invented by John W. Hedrick. Right? In, and in the year 1967, Alan Reed developed the ball and tube sensor. And in the year 1990, airbags became common and made us a standard equipment. And in the year 1998, dual frontal airbags were mandated by NHTAC. And in the year 2006, Honda made the first airbag, uh, first motorcycle airbag system, and it was a failure model. And uh, now you are entering the components which are involved in the airbag deployment. Okay. 
So there are three typical components involved. Crash sensor, airbag control unit, nothing but your ACU. Another one is your airbag module. So these are the three typical components involved in the airbag deployment. But your airbag module is further dismantled and to produce return airbag, inflator and igniter assembly, the bag itself, and then the lid cover. So these are all the components involved in the airbag system. Got it? So we will discuss the construction and working of these components one by one. So the first one is your crash sensor. So the sensors detect the impact and signal the airbag to inflate. So at least two sensors must be activated. So nowadays your modern cars have, are having more than four sensors to detect the collision. But in a typical system, at least two sensors should be needed because the ACU will not uh, take decisions uh, depending on the single sensor. Right? So at least two sensor, two volunteer sensors should be needed to trigger this. Right? Of these two sensors, one will be in your crumple zone. Right? Uh, we discussed before. Uh, let me show you. So the crumple zone is nothing but your crush zone which are the areas of the vehicle that are designed to deform. They are intentionally made with less rigid materials. See here, your passenger compartment is in the middle. So it's in the picture. Right? There will be two crumple zones, one at the front, another one at the rear. The one which is at the front is your uh, bonnet. And, on, and the other at the rear is your boot, nothing but your dicky. So these two crumple zones are intentionally made with less rigid materials in order to absorb impact forces. So after these crumple zones absorb the impact, then only the remaining energy only will enter the cabin now. Right? If there are no crumple zones here, what will happen? The total impact forces generated during a collision will directly reach the cabin. That will produce more harmful to the occupant. That's why we are intentionally keeping crumple zones in front. Right? Right? So of these two sensors, one of the sensors will be in the crumple zone. This is because since the crumple zone is in the front, it can detect the collision quickly. That's why replacing one of the sensors in the crumple zone. And another sensor will be in your passenger compartment, in the dashboard area. Right? Okay. So regarding the construction of this ball in tube sensor, as the name suggests, there will be a ball inside a tube. There will be a gold plated steel bar which is slides inside a smooth bore of the cylindrical steel tube which is closed at both ends. They show the cross section here. You can see the schematic representation here. Right? There, will be, there is a steel tube, cylindrical tube which is closed at both ends. Right? And there will be a gold plated steel ball which is slides inside the bore. Right? And one more thing. The motion of the ball is inhibited by placing a permanent magnet at one end. Right? In other words, the steel ball is held in place by this permanent magnet. At one end, you have a permanent magnet which holds the motion of the, which restricts the, which inhibits the motion of the ball. Right? On the other hand, you have a mechanical switch which is connected to the airbag control unit, ACU, part of the system. Right? So this is the construction. Then how it works? Whenever the sensor receives the impact force which is beyond its designed threshold, what will happen that time? The ball is knocked loose from its position, rolls down the tube and hits the opposite end. Got it? What will happen? Hitting the switch, hitting the opposite end will cause the uh, mechanical switch to close, right? The mechanical switch will close an electrical circuit. So as soon as the ball hits the mechanical switch, what will happen? An electric current, an electric signal will be sent to the AC that will inflate the airbag. So this is construction working of a ball intuition. Got it? Next one, airbag control unit, AC. This is the heart of the airbag system and it is located centrally in the dashboard area of your vehicle. Right? And this AC is responsible for the following things. It can detect accidents. It can detect the signals sent by the sensors. It can trigger the necessary firing circuits. It provides the proper supply of power supply to the firing circuits. 
then only your airbag will work right and it can run self diagnosis right it can do self diagnosis and if there is any fault is there and it immediately it will store the faults in the fault memory for future reference and as soon as it detects the fault memory it will activate the airbag indicator lamp in your speedometer like this you can see the lamp here right an yellow color light showing that your there is a fault in your uh, what is that airbag module got it right and it can connect to the other control units through your can network can bus right see whenever airbag is inflating it will trigger other uh, devices also other safety devices also for example whenever your airbag is inflating this uh, airbag control unit what it will do it will trigger the sensor in the automatic door sensing lock so what happen if your airbag is inflating during a collision your doors will automatically getting closed right so likewise it, it will control many devices for example the it will control the sensor in the in your seat belt that is nothing but three tension right it will make the seat belt to tighten automatically likewise whenever the airbag is inflating it activates other devices to work so it is connected to other devices through can bus got it okay so next is your most important thing inflator and uh, igniter assembly so in most cases both are considered the same component because igniter assembly is nothing but the combustion chamber which is placed inside the inflator module yes here also combustion chamber is there here also propellant is there here also ignition is happening right so like your ice engine everything is happening here also to produce the nitrogen gas because we are not storing any sort of uh, gases here we are producing we are generating the nitrogen gases whenever and wherever required right so the huge size compressed gas cylinders are replaced by compact inflators nowadays so this inflator is responsible for the generation of the nitrogen gases so regarding the working simply i'll say now uh this igniter assembly nothing but the combustion chamber is filled with uh, some sort of chemical right what will happen as soon as the gold plated ball hits the mechanical switch it will close an electrical circuit and uh, it will send the electrical signal to this inflator only right so this electric signal ignites the propellant ignites the chemical which is kept inside the combustion chamber and it will produce an explosive release of gas got it so we will discuss the working in detail in the latter chapter okay so this is inflator and igniter assembly and finally your nylon bag a shaft cushion made up of highly durable and highly stretchable thin nylon fabric which weighs around approximately 2.5 kg got it and then retainer box retainer box is nothing but a metallic cartridge which is used to hold the nylon bag in a folded condition because you fold the nylon bag and kept inside and uh, as soon as the uh, sensor sense the impact it will unfold and come out of the your steering wheel or dashboard right so retainer box is nothing but a metallic cartridge which holds you can see here i will zoom it now can you see here so this is the metallic cartridge nothing but a retainer box which holds the bag in the folded condition here it is inflating here it is inflated but originally it will be in a folded condition and lid is nothing but the cover on the top of the airbag module which something it will broke or something it will tear right anyhow it will open and allow the airbag to come out it is the final cover of the airbag module lid okay right? so these are the components involved in airbag deployment and this is how exactly your bag is mounted in your steering wheel there is a cross section of the steering wheel this shows the schematic representation here this is the center hub of the steering wheel where you are uh, you press your horn right so in the center hub inflator is placed to which your crash sensor nothing but your ball and tube sensor is connected got it and to the nozzle of the inflator the mouth of the nylon bag is connected instead of connecting the mouth of the nylon bag to the nozzle in the compressed gas cylinder what they made they made the mouth of the nylon bag to mount it to the nozzle of the inflator here Right? The very big compressed gas cylinders are now replaced by a compact uh, inflator. Right? This is the schematic representation, and here is the original cross section of which is mounted in say a, a typical original steering wheel. Got it? Right. 
And here they show the schematic components, the entire components in a vehicle. Right? So the driver is sitting in the driver's seat with the uh, his seat belt weird. And in uh, airbag is shown in the inflated condition. And here is the vehicle. And there are two sensors. These two are uh, boring tube sensors, crash sensors. But this sensor is nothing but a sensor in your seat belt, nothing but pre-tensioner. Right? So what pre-tensioner will do? How it is protecting the occupants during a collision? See here. In general, pre-tensioner is designed to retract the seat belt when collision occurs. It will tighten the seat belt automatically. But that is not the case in all the cases, right? If there is no pre-tensioner, what will happen? Initially, the driver is maintaining a distance of 10 inches. Right? But as soon as the collision occurs, what will happen? Due to his momentum, he will be thrown forward. So he traveled almost 6 inches now. And there will be only 4 inches between his chest and the center of the steering wheel. In other words, only 4 inches is there between his chest and the airbag. So what will happen? The second case will produce more impact on the chest of the body, which may result in risk factor also. Yes, airbag is not a... What is that? It is a deadly dangerous safety device. Right? So you should never think that the, the, since this is a soft nylon cushion, it will produce some gentle impact on your body. Never think that. Because of its velocity, it can broke your ribs, it can broke your bones in the face. Right? It will produce huge impact on the body of the occupant. That's why it is always advisable to wear the seat belt when the vehicle is equipped with the airbag. Got it? So what happened? He moved 6 inches means only 4 inches is there. So the airbag will be more violent in first 2 to 3 inches of inflation. Right? So this will produce more impact on the chest of the occupant when compared to maintaining 10 inches distance. So the mode of the play tensioner is to restrict the body of the occupant in the seat itself. So what will happen? So in general cases, due to the elasticity of the seat belt, this motion is happening. This six inches motion is happening. Then only the seat belt will hold and it will restrain you back. But if you use pre-tensioner, what will happen? As soon as the airbag inflates, the pre-tensioner will tighten you automatically. So the driver will not move forward. He will maintain the 10 inches distance always. So the airbag has to travel the entire 10 inches distance to reach the chest of the body which will reduce the amount of impact produced on his body. So what will happen within 6 inches, he can ask. Even a single inch distance can save a life. Right? So each and every inches, inches is very, very important in our back deployment. Got it? Okay. Now, working of our back. These are the components, but now we are going to enter how it is exactly working. Right? Uh, here are some theory, but we can discuss the working with the help of some pictures here. Yes, it is very good. Right? The first thing, whenever a car hits something, it starts to decelerate. Can you agree with me? There will be a rapid deceleration in the speed of the vehicle during a collision, which we could never experience under any other circumstances. For example, when a car is subjected to a hard braking, it will not come to a sudden halt. It will make some braking distance, it will skip for some distance, it will take some time to make the vehicle to complete stop. Right? But that is not in the case of accident, case of an accident. As soon as the car hits a barrier, right, the car will come to a sudden halt. There will be rapid deceleration in the speed of the vehicle. Okay? So the sensor detects the impact by measuring the deceleration rate only. The input of the sensor is nothing but the deceleration rate of the vehicle. Right? When a collision occurs, it will not be a smooth deceleration. There are, if you see the graph, there will be a rapid deceleration. There will be a rapid fall in the graph. So that is the input for your uh, ball into your sensor. If that rapid deceleration occurs, then only the ball can move out of the permanent magnet. And it can hit the opposite end. Right? Right. So this rapid deceleration, I think that the change in the speed is detected by the sensor and it sends the signal to the ACU. The airbag control unit, what it will do, the ACU which in turn sends the signal to the inflator 
and finally the electric current now reaches the igniter assembly igniter assembly is nothing but your combustion chamber which is placed inside the inflator module got it right so now we are going to see the construction of the combustion chamber itself right that is more important there will be igniter nothing but a heating element at the center you can see the red color pink color thing this is the igniter detonator right so there will be a igniter at the center of the igniter assembly which is connected to the mechanical switch of the body and tube sensor through a coil of wire like this so please remember the construction of your body and tube sensor there will be a steel tube right which is closed at both ends and there will be a ball inside which is be it is held in place by a permanent magnet at one end but on the other hand opposite to the permanent magnet you have a mechanical switch right that mechanical switch is connected to this igniter with the help of a coil of wire so what will happen as soon as the mechanical switch closes the electric signal the sensor sends electric current to the igniter right so the electric current will raise the temperature of the igniter right as soon as electric current is uh, reaches the igniter the temperature of the electric current uh, sorry igniter will increase right on the other hand this igniter is surrounded by the pellet of chemical named sodium azide nan3 which is a principal principal chemical compound behind the inflation of an airbag right a tablet a pellet of sodium azide is placed around the which surrounds the inflator uh, sorry which surrounds the igniter so what will happen the temperature rise in the igniter will ignite the sodium azide which is in contact with it right so the ignition generates the explosive release of nitrogen gas here so this is how exactly your propellant is getting ignited inside the igniter assembly combustion chamber got it so the chemical reaction which takes place which is followed by the explosive release of nitrogen gas is now allowed to pass through a filter screen because as soon as the chemical reaction is happening the temperature of the combustion chamber will rise to 700 degrees celsius right so what will happen the uh, explosive release of nitrogen gas which is at uh, around a pressure of around 120 bar is now allowed to enter the filter screen so in this process it is cooled down to reduce the temperature to around 80 degrees celsius at the outlet right so uh, so it will not harm the harm the occupant so if it is 700 degrees celsius it will burn the skin of the occupant right so in this process it is cooled down to reduce the temperature to 80 degrees celsius right so now your explosive release of nitrogen gas after getting filtered after getting cooled down to reduce the temperature now it is allowed to enter the nylon bag right then your air bag will inflate to protect it so this is how exactly the air bag is work got it right okay the bag should possess low coefficient of friction to ensure it unfolds easily and makes gentle contact with the skin so you know that the bag have been kept under folded condition in for a long uh, years right for 10 years for 12 years if there is no accident occur to that vehicle then there is no use of uh, airbag also so they have been kept idle for long years is it right or not so what happened so in order to unfold easily the bag should possess low coefficient of friction and one more thing you might have noticed the white color the chalky powder substance substance released from the airbag during a collision like this okay this is nothing but your uh, cans touch are your talcum powder in most of the cases mixer of both talcum powder and cans touch so airbag man it is used by the airbag manufacturers to keep the bag pliable and lubricated while they are in the storage right so in order to avoid friction between the metallic cartridge and the nylon bag airbag manufacturers are used talcum powders to reduce the friction between them right that's the white smoky cloud which is formed during a collision got it and there will be some ventilator holes at the bottom of the airbag at the rear side right these holes are used to 
make the nitrogen gases to escape out of the bag as soon as it uh, hit the occupant right no. as soon as it inflate immediately it, the bag will deflate how it is deflating the nitrogen gases which enters the bag are now allowed to escape out of the bag through this ventilated holes outflow opening got it so the chemistry became there but how the propellant is exactly getting ignited inside the combustion chamber we are going to see now right so the inflator nothing but your gas generator is filled with sodium azide na n3 and mixture of potassium nitrate kno3 and silicon dioxide sio2 right so from this it is evident that uh the sodium acid is not only the chemical involved in the inflation of an air bag there are other chemicals also potassium nitrate and silicon dioxide which are all together called as rocket propellant because these are the chemicals which are used as propellants in uh, launching the rockets and missiles that is called the name rocket propellant right okay. so the chemical reaction occurs in three step process here right the first step uh, first reaction is the decomposition reaction what is mean by decomposition reaction A reaction which makes a chemical compound to split into two or more products. A single chemical compound will split into two, two or more products under some influence uh, conditions like your temperature and pressure. Right? Okay. The first reaction, what will happen? The igniter ignites the sodium azide. So what will happen now? So the sodium azide, on the other hand, is a very stable compound under your normal room temperature. but when it is heated to more than 300 degrees celsius it will rapidly decompose to produce an explosive release of nitrogen gas that is so in this decomposition reaction what this uh, electric current will make it will make the sodium azide to decompose into sodium metal and nitrogen gas in the first reaction so this nitrogen gas is now directed towards your nylon bag to inflate it so our goal is achieved here what the goal to produce nitrogen gas for that only we are uh, making this chemical reactions to happen say the igniter assembly right so our goal is achieved here but we should not end the chemical reaction here why because the other product which is obtained during the first reaction nothing but your sodium is highly reactive and potentially explosive so we have to convert this toxic potential sodium into a harmless substance that's why you are having another chemical potassium nitrate and silicon dioxide right so sodium azide is a highly toxic compound the airborne exposure in the workspace limit is restricted to just 0.3 kg per millimeter cube right 0.3 mg per meter cube this is a airborne expo workspace exposure limit allowed in the or uh, uh, more than that will affect the workers right it will directly affect the central nervous system and brain so that the toxic compound is now split into two sodium and nitrogen nitrogen is is for us there is the sodium which is obtained from the first reaction is again also a toxic compound right what we will do and one more thing this sodium when reacts with the water the water form sodium hydroxide naoh right this will produce, this is another headache for scientists now because this will make some huge impact on your skin and wounds right so this sodium hydroxide in a very minute quantity is used in the manufacturing of your detergent soaps and powders that's why whenever you are washing your clothes you feel somewhat a burning sensation in your hands and it is it is somewhat irritant like right? right because of the sodium azide because of the sodium hydroxide right So in the next process, what we will do, the sodium obtained from the first reaction is now allowed to react with the potassium nitrate in the mixture to produce potassium oxide, sodium oxide, and additional N2 gas. This additional nitrogen gas is now combined with the gases generated in the first reaction to enter the air bag, and the remaining oxides are now again it is a harmful substance only. So these two oxides are. now allowed to react with the remaining mixture of silicon dioxide in the third reaction to produce alkaline silicate the chemical term is glass they generally re uh, refer this alkaline silicate as glass because of the nature of the chemical see here 
because of the glassy crystalline nature it got the name glass So the sodium which is obtained from the initial reaction is highly reactive and potentially explosive. But whereas the alkaline silicate is just obtained from the final reaction is harmless and stable. That's why we are making the chemical process in a three-stage process. Right? The first stage is to produce nitrogen gas. The remaining two stages are to convert the harmful chemical obtained during a reaction into a harmless substance. Right? This alkaline silicate is harmless to walk open. One more thing I want to mention here, the chemicals used in flames inside the inflator is very very important here because millions and millions of vehicles have been recalled so far in the history in order to replace this inflator. Right? Inflator failure occurs for many reasons. One of the biggest uh, recall recorded in the Indian history is the Honda's recall of almost 2.9 lakh vehicles of previous generation Honda occurred, Civic, City, Jazz, Brio in order to replace this inflator. Okay? There are more reasons for uh, the inflator to get into a failure. But one of the most important reasons uh, observed from the Takata airbags are, Takata is nothing but one of the leading airbag manufacturers from Japan. So what Takata did in 2001, they replaced this sodium azide with another chemical called ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3, ammonium nitrate. It is used in agriculture as a fertilizer or it may be used in uh, some sort of pyrotechnics. Pyrotechnics means nothing but in some sort of fireworks. Right? They replace the um, uh, sodium azide with ammonium nitrate. So ammonium nitrate is similar in chemical characteristics when compared to your sodium azide. But the problem here is ammonium nitrate is more hygroscopic in nature. What is mean by hygroscopic? The ability of the substance to absorb moisture from the atmosphere. Right? So they kept uh, ammonium nitrate is generally a white color crystalline solid like structure compound which is kept inside the inflator. But due to aging or due to some humidity conditions, what will happen? This will absorb moisture from the atmosphere and it will become like a paste inside the inflator. What will happen now? When the reaction occurs, this will produce a huge explosion like your uh, original plastic explosives. There will be a bomb which is sitting in front of you, in front of you, right? If you use a sodium acid, there will be a carefully controlled explosion. But uh, when you use ammonium nitrate, it becomes an explosion which is equivalent to your uh, original plastic explosive. See what will happen? The metallic inflator will burst out into small fragmented metallic chips that will strike into the front seat occupant, right? That will increase the fatal rate. So the chemical which is used to inflate the inflator is very very important here, right? Okay. And here is the summary of your chemical reaction. What are the reactants involved and what are the products we achieved in each and every reaction? Initial reaction is a decomposition reaction in which the sodium acid Na3 is decomposed to produce sodium metal and nitrogen gas. This nitrogen gas is used to inflate the airbag. In the second reaction, the sodium of the first reaction will react with the potassium nitrate to produce sodium acid potassium oxide and additional N2 gas. This additional and small amount of N2 gas is now allowed to enter the, now allowed to combine with the N2 gas in the first reaction to enter the airbag. So the remaining mixture of uh, potassium oxide and sodium oxide is now allowed to react with the silicon dioxide in the mixture to produce alkaline silicate glass which is a harmful, a harmful substance. Got it? Here they show the airbag inflation, how it is working. So design requirements. Nowadays with the introduction of crash VRAT sensors, our modern airbag control unit have the ability to differentiate the severity of the crash. Right? For example, ACU has to inflate the airbag whenever and wherever required. Yes? And in the meantime, it should not trigger the airbag whenever it is not needed. This is because of two reasons. The first one, if you inflate the airbag unwaterly, what will happen? The occupant will be subjected to a tremendous amount of uh, energy imposed by the airbag unwaterly. Right? Uh, his rib may get into fracture unwaterly because the pollutionary force is not that much big enough. Okay? So the airbag should not be inflated whenever it is not required. 
And the second reason is the cost. Airbag is not a prolonged application device. Airbag will be inflated only once in its lifetime. Once it is inflated, that's it. You have to take your vehicle to the showroom or service center and you have to replace the entire airbag kit which costs you around 60 to 65,000 rupees, Indian rupees. And for the installation, they will charge you around 10 to 15,000 rupees. So you have to be ready with 75,000 rupees approximately to replace a single airbag kit. So you should not uh, trigger your airbag unwantedly. Right? So what our scientists did, nowadays they made a crash variety sensor. So our airbag control unit uh, nowadays have been programmed with three sets of uh, collisional modes. Right? First one is uh, low speed collision. Second is, uh, second is the moderate. Third one is a severe collision. So low speed collision is characterized by the impact force which is generated during a collision when the vehicle speed is less than or equal to 8 km per hour. If a vehicle has met with the accident at 8 km per hour, this will not produce a huge impact. That is not a big deal, right? So your airbag control unit should not trigger the airbag and this, under this uh, condition. Right? Then moderate collision. It is characterized by the impact force generated during a collision when the vehicle speed is 24 to 32 kilometers per hour. This time, the AC has to inflate the airbag, but it can take some time. What is the time? 40 to 60 milliseconds. It is comparably lower than your severe collision. Right? And third one, severe collision. It is characterized by the impact force generated during a collision when the vehicle speed is equal to or greater, greater than or equal to 48 kilometers per hour. If the vehicle speed is more than 48 kilometers per hour, then the airbag has to inflate at its maximum potential in order to save the occupants. Right? So that time it will take only 10 to 20 milliseconds to restrain the occupants. Got it? These are all the design requirements with which your airbag control unit have been programmed nowadays. Right? Folding patterns. So your airbag, nylon bag, the 2.5 kg huge airbag has to fold it in a proper way and kept inside the metallic cartridge in order to inflate very quickly during a collision. So what are the four ways? We are having four patterns, the L, R, S and then your Z folding. So regarding the L folding, you can hear, see here, the individual folds are situated one into above, one, situated above and into one another. There will be a zigzag manner here. Right, right to left and then folder left to right, then folder right to left, like that they will make in a zigzag manner and the individual folds are situated one above the other. And one more thing, while folding, here the folding lines are straight. Right, because of the sharp edge produced during the folding. And manufacturing is complex and regarding the position of the inflator, the airbag is situated above the inflator here. See here, inflator is here, right where my cursor is there, that is the inflator, you can see here, right? This is the inflator and the nylon bag is situated above the inflator in case of L folding. Then what about your R folding? Here it will not form a sharp edge because they made a rounded edge at the top. It forms a concentric 3D wave structure around the inflator. Now the inflator is at the center, not at the bottom of the bag. The inflator is now at the center and the nylon bag is situated around the inflator, right? And the third type is a folding. Can you see any sort of uniform pattern here, folding pattern? No. They simply press the bag, they simply crush and press the bag from outside to the center of the hub. In simple, they simply crush the bag and kept inside the metallic cartridge. Why they are doing like this? This is the effective method, which is used by most of the manufacturers because, for example, if you take L folding, what will happen? It is folded 10 times, for example, like this. It is folded 10 times. While unfolding also, it has to unfold it 10 times, then only the bag will come, come out there. But here, if you press, if you crush the bag, what will happen? The bag will quickly deflate, inflate. Right? That's why our bag manufacturers use this S folding more. And finally, what is jet folding, it is out of date since it's high production cost and less efficiency, right? Here the construction is the individual folding lines are situated vertically around the scope of the gas inflator. There will be a ring-shaped bag which is situated one above the other. For example, you can imagine your 
suspension cover in your bike in the front suspension they will put uh, some rubber cover like that right a ring shaped structure like that the bag will be right so on the comparison is your s folding is very good got it and then are airbags really effective do they like say like because at one side we studied this as a safety this safety device on the other hand it produces fatal rate during a collision it produces severe impact on the occupant so what the what the confusion here is are airbags really effective do they save life so they say give some data for us we can see with the help of the flow chart here airbags are really effective because it reduces fatal rate right so see here your frontal airbag so here is your reduction of fatal rate in percentage right so front uh, frontal airbag reduced fatal rate in 27 percentage in case of your head on crashes head on crashes is nothing but face to face crash right So it reduces death by 13 percentage. Front passenger airbag reduces death by 13 percentage in all crash modes. Driver airbag reduces death by 47 percentage in case of head-on crashes. So out of 100 drivers, 47 drivers' lives are saved by this airbag. Right? Which is the meaning for this? Okay. And then your side view airbag, 38 percentage of Deaths have been saved by side airbag during side collision, right? So can airbags injure people? Absolutely yes. If you are not wearing your seat belt, then the impact will be very, 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 very more, right? Okay. Because because of the velocity, it produces that much huge impact on your body, right? According to NHTSA, 67 motor, 67 percentage of motors killed by frontal airbag have been passengers. Why? The driver airbag is not killing the drivers, but the passenger airbag is killing the passengers. Why? We discussed before because of the size, because of the 140 liters of nitrogen gas, it produces huge impact on the chest of the passenger. Since the size of your driver airbag is small, it produces somewhat smaller force. on the driver chest when compared the, to that of your passenger airbag okay more than 90% of the passenger airbag mortalities have been children and infants that's why it is always advisable not to seat your children or infant in the front seat they have to be seated in the rear seat only always please keep it in mind side airbags also have the potential to cause injury and the possibility to injure the top of the occupant top show is nothing but your part of the body and the region or place below the neck and above the above abdomen nothing but your chest area right that is called the star shoe right that will be more vulnerable to the inflation of an airbag if the driver is short he will receive the impact on his face if the driver is somewhat average height or taller then he will receive the impact on his chest only in the top shoe only right okay. So who has been injured? What are all the common mistakes made by the occupants while they are traveling inside the vehicle? They are listed here. Okay. Anyone or car are very close to the steering wheel. So what he is doing here? He makes his chest or body very close to the center hub of the steering wheel. So what will happen? So here, the risk zone of of the 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 risk zone for the driver airbag is the first two to three inches. it will be more vulnerable it will be more violent in first 2 to 3 inches of inflation because the explosive release of nitrogen gas hit the nylon bag at a rapid velocity around 200 to 250 miles per hour right so what this will happen it will make the bag more violent than the first 2 to 3 inches so if you are making see here in the sign picture he is making only 5 inches what will happen it will produce some sort of enormous amount of energy on his chest but if you make 10 inches distance what will happen the airbag is now allowed to travel for 10 inches distance so it will produce comparably lesser impact on the chest of the driver who is maintaining 10 inches at least 10 inches distance right and one more thing i want to mention the outflow openings nothing but the vent openings used in the airbags are not only used to make the nitrogen gas to escape out of the bag this only we mentioned uh, during the working 
but this outflow opening played a vital role in the impact produced by the airbag because if the oh, what is it outflow openings are not there imagine what will happen the nitrogen gas after inflating the airbag it will stay there so this will produce more impact on the body so what will happen the airbag is designed in order to inflate in this way how it is inflating means as soon as the nitrogen gas entering the bag the bag will inflate right and because of this outflow opening some of the gas, nitrogen gases will escape out of the bag so what will happen now as soon as hit the chest of the driver the internal pressure of the bag will somewhat reduced since some of the gases are escaping out of the outflow opening so during this 10 inches travel what your airbag is doing it is fully inflated and it will start to deflate then only you will uh, it is designed to hit the occupant but if you are maintaining only 5 inches distance then there is no time for the airbag to completely inflate and start to deflate while inflating itself it will hit you so that will be equivalent to hitting a solid stone not a nylon bag right that only break the ribs got it so it is advisable to maintain at least 10 inches distance from your center or center above the steering wheel all this and here are the common mistakes uh, they stretch their legs on the dashboard and they place the hands on the dashboard what will happen in the dashboard area you have passenger airbag right if you place your legs or hands on that what will happen it will make your hands or legs to go into fracture so you should not touch any component inside wearing your seat seat belt and seat straight that's the only thing you can do in your vehicle right you can listen to your music that's it okay the fourth they keep some object on the top of the glove box so what will happen near glove box air bag is there but they make some dvds or hard drives on the top of the dashboard this we will do we people are commonly doing this mistake whatever we in our hand we can open the glove box and kept inside but we will never do that we will place the object on the top of the dashboard imagine at 200 miles per hour velocity if a nylon bag hits you it will make you to get into fracture then what about the hard drive or other hard substances it is while inflating it is not the nylon bag that will reach you first it's a object which is placed on the top of the nylon bag will reach you first so if the hard bag strikes you at your face at 200 miles per hour what will happen you, you can imagine now right keeping a pen can make severe impact keeping a sharp pen what will happen it will come towards your eyes at 200 miles per hour right the impact the impact will be more so these are all the common mistakes which we have to be avoided while sitting in a moving car okay. and uh, here are the, what are the uh, nothing but the safety precautions have to be made by different set of occupants for driver driver have to sit with the chest at least 10 to 12 inches away from the center of the steering wheel and for pregnant women they have to be sit properly positioned they have to sit straight they have to make their face look forward and they have to wear the seat belt right and for infants and children there is no safety precautions for them avoid seating of children in the front seat right okay advanced airbag hardware so these are all the advanced technologies nowadays scientists have been introduced first one is a dual level air inflator this is working in accordance with uh, congestion with the crash severity sensor right the crash severity sensor can detect the severity of the crash right so according to the severity of the crash now the velocity has to be defined how it is doing means with the help of the dual level inflator so dual level inflators are nothing but instead of a single pellet of sodium as there two pellets of sodium said will be kept right so the firing uh, the control unit fires the two pellets pellets one after the other in normal cases it will general uh, it, it will fire the entire uh, sodium acid in a single stage but what it will here here it will fire the first sodium acid and after some time it will fire the second so how it is now differentiate the velocity here shorter the interval between the firing 
faster the airbag will inflate right longer the interval between the firing of two pellets slower the airbag will inflate so firing between the pellets will make the air uh, shorter the firing between the intervals will make the airbag to inflate at a much rapid rate but in any cases both the pellet have to be ignited and it cannot be reused in any sort of inflator while once it is inflated that's it you have to replace it right crash aware is sensor you know and then occupant sensor one of the most intelligent sensors used in uh, what is that airbags nowadays because these sensors are intended to detect the presence weight size position and other characters of the occupants in order to make deployment decision imagine a vehicle have met into accident but there is a driver only is there in the vehicle no passenger then what the use of inflating the passenger are by that right you have to spend uh, 75000 rupees now to replace that which is not at all useful because there is no occupant in the seat so what this uh, occupant sensor will do now it can detect the presence whether the uh, occupant is sitting in front uh, in sitting in the seat or not it will detect if there is an occupant it will inflate otherwise it won't right like this it can detect the weight and size of the person it can detect uh, whether uh, the occupant who is sitting inside the uh, who is sitting in the seat is a child or it's an adult it can detect then according to that deployment decisions decisions can be made and moreover it can detect the position whether you are wearing your seat belt or not it can consider that while de deploying the airbag so that's why we call uh, the occupant sensor is a more intelligent sensor in airbag right safety belt buckle switches are nothing but your free tensioner right the sensor in the seat belt buckle is your safety belt buckle switches we saw the working uh, and construction in the before itself right and we came to the conclusion now we are at the end of the session right so regarding to conclude this airbag significantly reduce the number and severity of uh, injuries no doubt in that but there is a still need for better development of airbag because it produces more injuries to the occupant and the always the repeatable advice here is use both airbag and seat belt together to save much life better than using one and feature airbag systems are nowadays were provided with a lot of airbags some of the examples are here first one is your pedestrian airbag pedestrian in tamil we call this pada sarigal passengers payanigal uh, pedestrian is pada sarigal right anyone who are doing cycling or walking they may hit with your vehicle that time what will happen the external airbags installed outside the car at the bottom of the windshield will deploy and uh, Uh, when the sensor detects a collision with the pedestrian, whenever the sensor detects a collision with the pedestrian, what will happen? The airbags which are mounted uh, at the bottom of the windshield will deploy in order to restrain the, in order to protect the pedestrian. Got it? So you can see various types of uh, here in the picture it is very clear. And what are all the other bags introduced? They introduce knee airbags now because. the driver airbag will uh, give the entire impact to your body only it will not see your legs your legs may hit with some hard person so what they provide nowadays is knee airbags which are which are used to exclusively protect your knees and legs during a collision and there are external airbags used nowadays right this is used to protect the vehicle to get into a d form which means please be remember the external airbag is the only active device because there is no use of external airbag after the impact has occurred so these airbags will inflate before the collision has occurred so it is an active device only the external airbag device airbag is a active device right whenever a vehicle is tend to hit with you from the side an ultrasound sensor will measure the distance between the upcoming vehicle at the side so what will happen it will inflate the airbag so it will provide some cushioning effect on the vehicle which is going to get into a collision right so that way it is used to protect the vehicle from a collision that way it protects the occupants also right and then safety belt airbag other is called a seat belt airbag this is nothing but the airbag which is mounted in your seat belt itself because during a collision the seat belt will make huge impact on your chest and shoulders right so in order to avoid that 
seat belt airbags are used and finally centered airbags which will be inflated in between the driver and the passenger or between the two passengers of the rear during a collision because during a side impact the heads of the two passengers may get into a nice smash or the head of the driver and the head of the co-passenger can get into a nice smash so in order to avoid that the airbag will inflate in between these two passengers or the driver between and between the passenger it will inflate and protect the occupants so from this i conclude the session right so if you have any questions you can type in the chat box i will answer for that so i thank all the participants for your cooperation and passion for the entire session Hello, sir. Some of the questions Hello, posted in chat. Sir. Some of the questions ah. posted in. Ah, posted. Box, ah. Okay, 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 okay. I'll see, ma. I'll see and answer for. Which type of sensor used in airbag? Either active or passive type. I can't get the question also. The sensor, the device is used in the airbag apart from uh, external airbag. Everything is passive only, right? Yeah. In fact, has to occur. Then only these sensors, this airbag, this nylon bag, this airbag, airbag control unit will get into work. If there is no accident, no work for them. So can we change bag material to avoid this danger? See. <laughs> water is a very some what is a very soft substance it is very much needed for the metabolism of our body right but in unconventional machining process this water can cut the hard substances huge steel or concrete whatever may be this water will cut because of the velocity with which it is coming out of the nozzle right so whatever be the soft substance because of the velocity it will produce huge impact we can avoid that but Researchers, researchers are continuously going on to reduce the impact. Are old cars unsafe? In which meaning you ask that I don't know. Whether uh, the airbag is kept for a long time, so it will be useful or not, like that you are asking, or I don't know. But the airbag will be in an activated condition for so many years, right? No doubt in that. So the airbag. Which had been sleeping for more than 15 years can have the ability to inflate all of a sudden within 20 milliseconds to restrain. Whether the car is newer car or older car, that's not the issue. If airbag is there, then definitely it will protect it. Sir, can we we can make the car to float in the air if we use helium, right? Sir, um, here uh, we have to. Concentrate on the velocity which, with which a gas can produce. Right? Nitrogen is used is used by considering various factors because it will not be overheated during the inflation. In summer days, we are all advised to use uh, nitrogen gas in the wheels of the bikes, right? Because inflation or uh, what, what is it? Tire burst will be avoided while using nitrogen gas because it can withstand high temperature. Like the large many factors have to be considered while uh, choosing the gas, right? Nowadays uh, we said that uh, compressed gas canisters are failed in uh, airbag deployment in 1950, but nowadays they are using hybrid inflators which use both inflator and the compressed pressure vessel. You know that hybrid whenever we are using hybrid, it takes it works from two sources. Hybrid vehicle means it can work from electric also as well as from petrol also, right? Like the hybrid inflator means it produces nitrogen gases in two ways. One is your regular mechanism through inflator, and another one they make the nitrogen gas to kept under high pressure and steady pressure vessel, and there will be a soft membrane on the top. And while in uh, collision is occur, the membrane will tear, and the compressed uh, gases will allow to mix with the uh, nitrogen gases which is generated from the cylinder. Both will protect the occupants nowadays, right? Okay. 
why we are using only nitrogen gas or not some other gases uh, i answer for that nitrogen argon gases also used for this purpose and sir if a car is operated on fully conscious artificial intelligence then will the airbag control system have a separate uh, artificial control or all of it will be controlled by this thing? there will be a separate system separate ai system for your airbag right it will not be mingled with the another one because nowadays the ball and team center cash centers are placed all around your vehicle right for example uh, one sensor will be at the side Uh, one sensor will be in the control zone one at the front one at the bottom where here what will be okay right? a collision which uh, a first force collision is occurring right in that the impact force is somewhat less means then there is no need to inflate the side airbag right you, you don't want to waste the side airbag which is uh, unwanted when it is not needed so at that time what happen the two sensor will send a signal to the acu right Uh, so at the time what this ac will uh, do it will compare the impact forces sent by the two signals right so the impact uh, the the deceleration rate from the frontal collision is more than it will inflate the frontal airbag but in case of side whether it is needed it will inflate otherwise it won't inflate the side airbag alone Right? There, so there is, there should be a separate artificial intelligence for this purpose. Hello, sir. Ah, okay, ma'am. Ah, uh, sir. Ah, uh, Sharmi, ah. our poster one question. What is the cost of okay. sodium acid? Cost of sodium acid, like that, we, we, they will not buy separately. The entire, uh, what is it? Total airbag system only we can buy. you can buy the sodium because they will not buy the sodium acid separately because it's a highly toxic compound if you inhale it will be equivalent to your cyanide immediate, immediate death will happen so what in german or european they will do you know one thing after the usage they will not sell the car for second use they will crush the car and they will put into crash right that time the sodium acid in the uninflated airbag will cause the uh, workers to go, to die uh, so there is no there is no separate cost for that right is there any question from if we adjust the driver seat what will happen that only i am saying that in older cars you cannot adjust the position of your steering wheel or your uh, seat but nowadays with the modern car for luxury what they are doing they make your steering wheel into what is it it can go into uh, many angle right your seat is also can be adjusted you can move front you can go backward you can make your height up down you can do your inclination so the all sort of uh, this luxury features you can make your steering wheel at anywhere you want to wish so it is always advisable to make 10 inches distance from the center of the hub that's the only thing we can advise right nowadays uh, our steering wheels are tilt and telescopic you know this right So tilt means you can make your uh, what is it steering wheel to bring it to very close or you can make it or farther distance from your chest. Telescopic means you can adjust the angle of the steering wheel. Okay. So what how you are adjusting it your way make it seated in your convenient position. No problem there. But after getting into a convenient seated position, please ensure that there is a 10 inches distance from the center of the steering. That's it. Sir, side airbags we use only luxury cars or ordinary cars. So, yeah, yeah, sir. If you increase the number of airbags, then the ultimately the cost of the vehicle will go. That's why the frontal airbags are made mandatory. Uh, no one will talk about the side airbags and all. 
side air back window curtain and where they it's according to your wish but here after the vehicles uh, it is going to sell in india also have to get both uh, frontal air back so you will uh, your price of the car will definitely increase at least uh, 1 lakh will increase from the normal car which you don't have air back right so if you increase the number of the air back then ultimately what will happen the cost of the vehicle will increase Uh, very. Ah, uh, ma'am. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Ah, uh, you posted the link, ah, uh, ma'am. Uh, feedback link. Yes, sir. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So I'll share my number and mail it in the chat box now, so you can ask. Uh, Ask your questions in my mail or what about? I will try to answer. I would like to thank management, principal, and trader for undertaking this webinar. I'd like to thank Mr. Borussia, managing partner from Micro Technologies. Thank you sir, for the wonderful session. And since we have also the technology head of the department, thank you sir. My sincere thanks to thank you all participants from various colleges. Thank you once again. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I thank the management principal HD sir and all the coordinators from LIT for giving us such an wonderful opportunity to conduct this webinar. Thank you, thank you all the participants. Ma'am, participants kindly fill the feedback form. Feedback form. I ask to fill the participants. Yeah, it is in the chat box. The meeting will be there for another ten to fifteen minutes, so that all the participants can fill the form and exit the meeting. 